Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host for Upticks. Today's our 72nd episode, 2019 Year in Review. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. As of the airing of this show, we'll be uh, getting very close to the end of 2019. Uh, so this week, we wanted to kind of recap what happened this year and maybe get some forecasts for next. Okay. Uh, but first, I wanted to do a shameless plug. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, um, we love our subscribers. Thank you all to uh, the new people that are subscribing and our current subscribers. If you think our video is worthy, please go ahead and mash that thumbs up button. We really appreciate that. And if you're listening to this on uh, your favorite podcast medium, we'd also uh, appreciate some good feedback is there as well. And you can find me on out there on all the social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And Corey, what about you? I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn also. Perfect. Yeah, and your handle is? Uh... My handle on Twitter is at Corey Bittner KC. That's where I'm the most active. Perfect. So again, thank you all for subscribing to our content, and we certainly enjoy producing it. It's all organically done here in our office in Kansas City. Okay, so getting to our topic today, what in the world happened in 2019? And first, I wanted to talk about our practice at Falcon Wealth Advisors. Uh, we just celebrated our three-year anniversary uh, from breaking away and joining Hightower, and we've that's been right. really, really pleased um, with everything that's happened. So we've actually signed up over 55 new clients this year uh, to add to our already growing uh, client list. That's been a lot of fun. And our assets that we manage grew over 30%, uh, which is pretty remarkable. Typically, an advisory firm that grows at 5 or 10% is considered good, um, good, excuse me, but ours grew at 30. So we're very happy about that. We added two team members. Uh, we added uh, Matthew Johnson in March. He backed up Samantha while she was out on maternity leave having her twin babies. And he did so admirably. He Might did. I add, Matt? He did a great job. And now he's transitioned into a role of advanced planning. So he's helping uh, our clients with a lot of tax planning currently, which has been a lot of fun to be able to help people lower their tax column, potentially at least. And then we added Marella, who, who's taken over our concierge position in May. Um, because that we promoted Abby. So Morella does all of our scheduling for myself, you, and James. Mm -hmm. And she also pushes out our organic content, which has been a lot of fun to produce. So she makes sure that everything that you're seeing on Facebook and these videos uh, looks professional uh, and is well done. Also added um, Cassie, your bride. So That's right. we got married in October and then I bought a puppy dog, Einstein. So our team is growing along with our client base and the assets that we manage. So it's been a lot of fun. We've been very blessed this year and uh, our team is fantastic. So there's nine of us currently working for Falcon Wealth Advisors. We're bringing on an intern here, actually the week of this recording. He's gonna start uh, here pretty soon. He's finishing up his senior year at the University of Kansas. So we're really excited to have him uh, come on, Matthew Navikas. He will be helping us with research and hopefully eventually trading um, as that platform continues to get built out. Yep. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. We had a pretty awesome year, hasn't it? We've had a great year. Yeah. And you know, from a business standpoint, the idea is expanding into this bigger office that we moved into in 2018, adding team members, bringing on interns, all of those things that we do is so we can continue to help more people, help more people plan for retirement, help more people plan for uh, you know, their long term. So the idea is you and I kind of had the thought and made the decision uh, and have talked through the faster that we expand our team, the more people we can work with. And that's what allows us the capacity to bring on new clients. Right. Yeah, to be able to bring on 50 clients, you definitely have to have a process in place yes. um, to be able to serve those clients efficiently and correctly. And that being said, even though we are set up to bring on new clients, we're not functioning like a Walmart or a Quick Trip here. We're very niche focused still. And so right. the idea is that um, we work with people, you and I particularly, we work with people that are at or near retirement. So typically our clients are 50 years of older. Uh, they don't want to be sold products. So we're stock and bond and options guys. We don't use any products for our clients. And we're goals based, meaning we're not just out there throwing money at the, at the market. <laughs> we're actually uh, leading our clients through financial planning and particularly with a retirement tilt. Uh, we've also got James, who's our certified financial planner on our team. He's working with our emerging clients. He's literally have client, he literally has clients in their 20s up until their 90s. 
Uh, and so he's working with our younger clients in a very unique uh, manner. He, they can actually do a subscription fee with him. And so right. kind of like you pay for Netflix or I know you and Cassie love Disney Plus. <laughs> so uh, you can pay James a subscription fee and he'll give you all of the service and, and the experience and the technicalities uh, that we offer our clients that maybe don't have the assets there uh, that a normal retiree may have. So that's been a lot of fun. But again, still very niche focused, um, goals planning, don't like using products. Uh, and that's been working very well for us and obviously very well for our clients as well. I think I got a lot of it. You did. You uh, touched a lot of bases. That there. was a lot. Well, well let, I'm going to let you talk about a year in review then for the rest of the world. So what happened? Where do you want me to start? Let's start with the markets since that's what we talk about a lot. So how does the stock market do this year? Yeah, so the S&P 500, at least in the United States, right, which is the 500 largest companies in the United States that make up that index, is as of this recording, it is up over 25% uh, this year. Which... And it averages what, around nine-ish? Right, so it's up over, it's almost triple the average year. Right. Who would have thunk that after 2018 was negative? No, I, exactly. And in fact, something that I wanted to do and maybe a discussion we can have on a future show was to revisit- Is thunk a word? I, I should have said think thought. So. <laughs> who would have thought that? Well, who would have thunk it is kind of an expression, <laughs> right? So what I was going to say is that I think it would, casual be, today. it would be uh, interesting or fun to see. I don't know if I would think it's fun. I don't know if everybody else would to look at everybody's predictions for 2019 at the end of 2018 and looked at what people thought would happen versus what actually happened. So anyhow, as far as the markets go uh, in the United States, they've done very well. Um, that's also been the case for a lot of the rest of the world, too. Yeah. Well, I don't know about every index in every single country. Right, right. Uh, we have seen positive returns in lots of places. And the bond market's done well also. I think that was a big surprise that the Fed uh, this year lowered rates uh, three times after having a history of raising them in recent times. And so, in fact, some, sorry to cut you off ahead. there. What I was going to add to that is some of the concern in the fourth quarter of 2018 about 2019 was, was the Federal Reserve going to lower interest rate, or I'm sorry, raise interest rates two times, three times, or four yeah, times good in point. 2019. And, We've actually seen quite the opposite happen. Yeah, they actually lowered rates three, three times. times that's uh, helped the bond market do very well also. Right. Which I don't particularly like. I like them to zigzag a little bit more. So I don't like seeing stocks and bonds up because I'd also don't want to see them both down. Sure. But I think the Fed has paused lowering rates for now, which is probably a good thing. Right. And we'll really be looking in 2020 for companies to start expanding their earnings. This year, it's been all multiple expansion. Uh, caused primarily by them lowering by the Fed lowering rates. Uh, so again, we really want to pay attention to corporate earnings as they are reported quarterly. And if you can get some expansion there, uh, you could see this market have another good year. So if I asked you in two or three sentences to explain multiple expansion versus earnings expansion, how would you explain that? Yeah, and I guess I used a little bit of jargon there. So multiple, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about price to earnings. Uh, so basically, it's how much is the market willing to pay based on the earnings projections of a certain company. And that's how we get to these valuations and the dollar amounts and everything it's worth. Um, so again, because earnings haven't been that, that much better, at least, I'm not saying that they were bad this year. They haven't been great though. They certainly haven't been great to justify sure. the 25% return that we've seen. So the idea is something has to cause that and it's called multiple expansion is because rates are lower. Makes sense. Which helps, helps that multiple. Uh, so again, so next year for 2020, we will be paying very close attention to what earnings are doing. And if earnings beat or continue to grow, the market can definitely see, see have room, still have room, excuse me, to grow even more. Makes sense. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so again, bond market's done well. What about uh, just macroly speaking on a, on a world level? What are some of the big events to recap on? Yeah, so we had the impeachment uh, inquiries still and, going on yeah, yeah. ongoing yeah it, it, when that ends I don't know but uh, that started this year or I guess the formal process for that to start uh, began this year uh, very recently we saw Boris Johnson was elected in the United Kingdom what do you think of him I don't really know enough about him to have too much of an opinion is he the I, one that's gonna make brexit happen though that's the belief okay uh, I he certainly seems like an interesting fellow I'll put it that way <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens but the belief is that Brexit, which was voted on three and a half years ago for the United Kingdom to leave the European Union, that that's actually going to happen now that he's, I guess, leading the charge. So time will tell. What else? Uh, good question. You know, if we're so, I hate to admit this, but I feel like attention spans in the world now are so different that I'm like, I can think about what happened in like the last month. 
And when I think beyond <laughs> that, it's sometimes it's hard for me to think because you're, we're just you know overstimulated. I think sometimes with information. What about who won the uh, NBA championship? Um, the Toronto Raptors. Toronto, yeah, and I think yeah. that was a little bit unexpected. Yeah, I think so too. Then the Washington Nationals won in October, won the World Series. Definitely unexpected. Uh, who won the Super Bowl? Uh, the Patriots. Ah, that's right. They beat right. the Rams early. If you remember the game? February. Was, it's not a very good game. That's um, right. It was a low scoring game, wasn't really, it? Really, really low scoring, and yeah, early February. So early in the year, if that seems such like such a long time ago, but I yeah, know. the Patriots won the World Series, and the Raptors won the NBA. Tiger Woods won a Masters. That's right. That was yeah, a huge that seems like deal. a long time ago, too. Huge deal <laughs> yeah, for him. Right. Very happy for him. He's playing sure. some amazing golf in his 40s. Um, so it's been a really big deal. Of course, we've had uh, the Bahamas get struck with the hurricane, right? So we, we continue to have um, big events out there uh, for humanity, which we don't like seeing, obviously. Um, but all in all, it's been a pretty good year. Unemployment numbers are down to 3.5%. Oil prices are still relatively low. Um, you know, and earnings, like I said, even though they weren't, uh, you know, blowing it out of the water, they still had a pretty good year. Pretty, pretty darn good year for 2019. And, and the point of this show is that, like you mentioned earlier, is I don't think a lot of analysts were expecting that. And most importantly, nobody knew. Right. If I would have asked you in December of last year if, you, if Trump was going to get impeached or go through hearings or that the market was going to be up 25%. I think I would have had more trouble believing the market part of that. The right, the Trump. Okay, yeah, because I think that was looming, maybe. Yeah. Um, but what about the Washington Nationals winning the World Series? Yeah, no. I, or about a hurricane hanging in the Bahamas? Right. And so, again, that's the whole point of this show is it's fun to recap, right, things that we remember. But it's also important to remember that none of us, not even you or me, Corey, can predict the future. Right. Right. That's, and, a, that's a really good point. Yeah, and we don't try to do it. And we're never, I, should, I guess I shouldn't say never, but the idea is that um, we're not going to do that with our clients' portfolios. Uh, we do run out projections for financial plans, of course, because we're planning, right? We are forward looking and thinking, but we're not going to try to roll the dice and say, okay, well, the market's up 25%. We better take it all out because next year that means it's going to go down because we don't know. But what we do know, as long as that we focus on asset allocation, picking good, high quality stocks and bonds for our clients and watching it closely, um, that hopefully over time we will hit their target rate of returns that's predicated on their financial plans that help them realize their financial goals. And we're here to inspire our clients and to help them uh, feel comfortable with what they're doing and retire with confidence. What were you gonna say? What I was gonna add to that is, you mentioned how clients have a specific target rate of return based upon you know, how a portfolio is done historically. You've probably noticed in meetings with clients this year, and I certainly know that I have, that if we're looking at the last two or three years of performance, uh, we're looking at the last few years of how their accounts have done. And none of those years have has their actual return been anywhere right. close to their target. But when they've been averaged out, that's been much more in line with what expectations. Yeah, exactly, are. that's a very good point. Yeah. So if your target is six, seven, eight, nine percent, whatever it is, uh, it's very rare that you're going to, if ever, hit that number right on the right on the button there. Which is why at the end of 2018, we didn't say, well, you know what, the world is ending. It's time to get out of stocks altogether and change your return assumptions we remained disciplined and, yep. and static with that. Just like now, a year in which the market's up 25%, just because someone's stock portfolio has done really well doesn't mean, well, now our expectation is we're gonna make 5% more than what our target right. was. It's not changing year over year. Yep, exactly, and you don't wanna do that. You're just chasing it and it's no good. And you don't wanna look at historical performance either and make forward assumptions based on that. A lot of advisors will do that. We're like, well, this, mutual fund or products done well, so we're gonna buy that. Well, that's bad too, because that doesn't, again, that's no indicator of what future performance is gonna look like. So you have to be careful with that. And again, the big takeaways today's show is it's fun recapping what Corey and I can remember of what happened in 2019, um, but also we couldn't have predicted it. I didn't know we were gonna bring on 50 more new clients. I no. didn't know we were gonna hire Morella or that Matt was gonna come back from Denver to join our, rejoin our team. Right. Right. Well, I didn't know Sam was gonna have twins. Right, all these fun things. I didn't know you were going to get married. Maybe you did. You had a good idea that you were going to. I didn't know I was going to have a puppy named Einstein. Um, but you know what? And that's been fun. And that's the joy of life is that uh, we work very hard to stay in the present moment. Um, we can learn from the past and anticipate the future. But again, ultimately, all we have is today. And you want to think of the same thing with your financial goals and your investments. And that's, what, you know, again, we're here to help guide our clients through times, both good and bad. And 
I'm really glad you said that because the point I'd like to add to that, whether someone is already retired um, or they're planning on retiring very soon or they're getting started and it's early in their career, right. I think that it's really important to try your best to find the balance in enjoying the present moment while also planning for the future. Understanding that you know life happens, crazy things can happen. Absolutely. We don't know what the future is going to hold, um, but you don't want to completely live in the moment and totally sacrifice your future. Right. And you don't want to do the, the opposite of that either. Yep, absolutely. It's good advice. So perfect. That's all the time that we have for today. Again, happy new year, everyone. Before you go on, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't. We talked about all the sports. I forgot to mention that the St. Louis Blues won oh, the Stanley Cup. That's so. right. There's I had to your make sure St. I Louis that plug. There, so. Well, I had, speaking of that, so real quick also, what was the biggest, um, I guess, unpredictable thing that happened this year to you? It can be finance related or, or macro. What do you think? I'm trying to think too for me. If somebody at the end of 2018 would have laid out all the things that we talked about now, and you asked me which one I thought was the most unpredictable, I frankly probably think that I would have said the market being up over 25% in 2019. Yeah. Because the way that our human nature works and the way that sentiment and, and price have a relationship with each other, when things were bottoming out at the end of 2018, nobody could have, maybe some people, well, there are some people that did, that had those predictions, but most people, feel worse about the future when things are going poorly. Right. I would, actually, I'd agree with you. If you would have told me in 2018 that the, the S&P 500 is going to be up over 25% in 2019, I would have been like, wow, that's really surprising. Right. So yeah, that's you're right. And that's the whole point. You can't time it. You don't want it to try to time it. And uh, nobody can predict the future. I probably also would have said there's no way the Nationals will ever win a World Series. But, <laughs> Good for them. But they did. So. Yeah, they beat the Astros, And they right? did it well, yeah. Yeah. Didn't they sweep them? No. That's, but anyways, no, they did but pretty they well. the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. Sorry yeah, about that. That happened. That's all right. They but the Blues well. won, the, won the NHL, so there you go. That's right. So. Also, I never thought that day would come either. So. There you go. Hopefully, the, uh, when we're doing the 2020 recap, we can talk about when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Ooh, that'd be a fun one. They look like they're getting good at the right time. We'll see. It's happened before. We'll see. Yeah, true. Fair so. enough. Anyways, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, as always, you can find us out there on all the social media platforms. If you have an idea for a show for 2020, Corey and I are all ears. You can certainly reach out to me at, at Falcon Wealth Advisors. My email is jake at falconwealthadvisors.com. And Corey? Yes, feel free and email me. It's Corey at falconwealthadvisors.com. Perfect. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope you all have a great week.